Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel. Um, we're just a couple of days away now from the you know the massive game for us. Really, it's two massive clubs, Manchester United versus AC Milan. Uh, the sort of game that you would expect uh, to be gracing the Champions League and not the Europa League. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon that we've drawn AC Milan, I really am. Um, but I do wish it was in the superior competition where such a fixture uh, deserves to be. Uh, I remember uh, the, I remember some of the great AC Milan teams, great players that played for them. Paolo Maldini, Marco Van Basten, Rude Olic, Frank Rijkaard. Uh, I could go on. Uh, but then, slowly but surely, we, we, we overtook AC Milan and became a more successful club than they were. Um, obviously, our treble team, and, and not long after that, we were, we were doing better than AC Milan were. And now to find, to find both such massive clubs uh, competing with each other in the Europa League, to be honest, it, it's a little bit sad. Uh, but nevertheless, it is a mouth-watering fixture. Uh, and I can't wait for it. They're second uh, in Syria. We're second in the Premier League. Um, so it's uh, you know it's an exciting prospect. It really is. I'm looking forward to it. There's no there's no further news uh, of uh, injuries. Uh, you know players coming back or any further injuries either. Uh, obviously Anthony Marshall made it for the derby when they thought he might not. Uh, I was I mentioned at the weekend. I was surprised Juan Mata was injured and Van der Beek was injured. Uh, who, who rarely play and Martial's not been playing every game recently and he was injured all the players who were injured were all players who don't often play or, or not playing all the time for certain in fact in one matter and Van der Beek's case they rarely play and yet they were the injured players and then Cavani as well he's not been playing every game and he, and he got injured for some reason or other so whether he's going to be available Thursday night I don't know but it's uh, it's one to look forward to uh, and Looking at the uh, at the, the results in the Premier League last night, um, I think there's going to there's definitely going to be a major battle for these two. I'm not suggesting there's a chance we could get dragged into it. I'm going to look at that at the end as I always do. There's a chance we could get dragged into it. I'm not suggesting we will get dragged into it, but whether we're in that race or not, it is going to be a fascinating battle. It really is. There's numerous teams there, uh, you know, piling up behind us who will be competing. Uh, maybe for one spot, maybe for two spots, but if we don't pull our finger out, there'll be a, there could be a, there could be six or seven of us, including us, uh, competing for three places. I would say that it's only Manchester City who actually nailed on rock solid, one hundred percent facts will be will be in the top four. Uh, all the rest of the teams, including us, we might you know we we might have a bit of work to do, and obviously a, a lot of the other teams have got a lot of work to do, but it it could be fascinating. Um, this game, I never thought I'd be saying this, but this game against West Ham at the weekend has taken on massive proportions. It really has. I mean, I'm speaking about some of the players being fit for Thursday there. Uh, I really hope some of them are, are, are fit. We need a stronger bench. We need a stronger squad. Uh, by the time we play West Ham Sunday, it'd be a game that I'd love to win. I never thought I'd be saying this, and I, but I honestly mean it. It's vital that we don't lose. I said this again about the Chelsea game of the week, but with Chelsea, it was different. They, they were resurgent, if you like, under Thomas Tuchel, and they had another good win last night. Uh, they're resurgent, and they've climbed the league, and now they're, you know, I think Chelsea have got, have got for, for me, they're favourites to finish in the top four. E equally as favourite us, as I would say, I would say us, if I had to put money on it, I would say us and Chelsea are the two favourites. Uh, to be in the top four. I wouldn't even put Leicester above Chelsea at the minute because they're on such a run and they've got this new, they've got the new manager bounce, if you like, but they're already well past that, really. 11 or 12 games unbeaten now under Tuchel. And as I say, it was a good win last night. If Everton would have won last night, they'd have been in a in a great position and they're still in a decent position. So uh, so that was a that was a fascinating game in that regard. But back, back to the West Ham game. West Ham beat Leeds 2-0. Uh, Jesse Lingard... Uh, scored one of the goals he, he got tripped up in the box won the penalty uh, took the penalty the keeper saved it and he followed up and had a simple task of uh, tapping it in with his left foot um, and they went on to win 2-0 West Ham against Leeds uh, uh, quite a funny moment on the uh, the interview last night after, after the game where they interviewed Declan Rice and uh, he, he, the host of the show um, said to him um, 
what's happened with the captain. I thought the captain was the penalty taker. Declan Rice must have been taking the penalties to take it. And uh, Declan Rice was bigging up Jesse Lingard for sort of saying what confidence he has. And, you know, even though the keeper saved it, it you know, it was a good save and he followed it up and at least he scored and everything's unky dory and the, and the host said to him uh, so uh, so will he be t- uh, will you be taking him or will he be taking him in the future and it was a scruffy penalty it wasn't a good penalty at all he was lucky to get a rebound and, and get a tap in and Declan Rice straight away said straight away said, uh, straight, straight away said the manager said I'm back on him now so having just he sort of bigged up Jesse Lingard. He immediately said he's off him now. He's had one penalty and, and that's that. Uh, but, you know, they did win. They won 2 0. I'll have a look at the table in a minute. Chelsea beat Everton 2 0. 2 0 with an own goal and a penalty. But they, they won't care about that. Like I say, Tuchel's doing a great job there. And uh, I think that I do think Chelsea will finish in the top four. So Chelsea beat Everton 2 0. West Ham beat Leeds 2 0. Uh, and it leaves it like this. Obviously, City are way out on top, 65 points. But then there's us 54 points, Leicester 53 points. You know, you feel as though Leicester have been slipping a little bit, but they had a decent win at the weekend. Uh, so there's still only a point. Even Well, ours was a great win. We wouldn't have overtook them without beating City. We'd have been behind them. So you can't rule Leicester out, obviously, despite the fact that they've got a few injuries and you might think they're sliding a little. Uh, but Chelsea... 28 points and uh, sorry 50 points from 28 games so only four points behind us and uh, West Ham with that win fascinating this now this is what I'm saying about the weekend uh, West Ham 48 points from 27 games so there's six points behind us and they've got a game in hand on us so if they were managed if they managed to beat us West Ham they'd be three points behind us with a with a game in hand on us So it's vital that we don't lose, just like it was with the Chelsea game. It's vital that we keep that six-point gap uh, between us and West Ham. Um, When we played Chelsea away, it's funny how you think about different clubs. I mean, West Ham are in a stronger position than Chelsea were because Chelsea didn't have games in hand on us. They were just six points behind us. In West Ham's case, they're six points behind us, but they've got a game in hand on us. But because it's West Ham and not Chelsea... I'm thinking to myself, no, if offered the draw, I, I wouldn't take it, which I said I would take it against Chelsea. And uh, we do, you know, I would like us to win. We need to win, really, because if we do drop points to West Ham, it's the other teams that are gathering behind us as well. It's not just, the, it's not just being able to keep West Ham at, at arm's length. For example, Everton, 46 points with a game in hand on us. If, let's say we were to draw with West Ham this weekend, we moved to 55, Everton could move to 49, they'd be six points behind us with a game in hand. And I wouldn't rule Spurs out either. Um, Spurs, 45 points, 27 games. You know, it's a, it, it sounds a lot, but they're, they're on the up with Gareth Bale and Harry Kane getting a couple of goals each the other night. So yeah, I, I just think it's going to be a tough battle for at least two of the spots. We need to win a couple of games and just keep everybody at arm's length. Like we've got to play some of these teams, a lot of them have, lot of them have got to play each other as well. So I, I just think just a, just a few more wins, I, mean, I don't know, three or four wins out of the next five or six games would make, make a massive difference for us. Um, Liverpool, by the way, I, I, I think Liverpool have got a slim chance of the top four, but it is a slim chance. They're on 28 games, 43 points. So, so there's seven points behind Chelsea. But like I say, Chelsea are on the up. Uh, Leicester, who you might think are sliding a bit and you might think they've got injury problems, but Leicester in third, you know, they've got 53 points. So there's 10 points there. They've got to make 10 points up in 10 games. So um, I, I, I think Liverpool are not... I do, honestly, I can't believe it. But I don't think Liverpool are going to make the top four. Obviously, above, above Liverpool, you've got Spurs, Everton and West Ham as well. 43 points to Liverpool, 45 to Spurs. So that's only two points, although Spurs have got a game in hand. Uh, the three, Liverpool are three behind Everton and the five behind West Ham. They're all catchable. They're all they're, That's doable if they can string a few wins together. But... Uh, like I say, I don't see Chelsea, you know, slipping up too much. I don't see them catching Chelsea. And is the gap just too big for them to catch Leicester or us, indeed? So you know, we're ten points in front of Liverpool. Uh, sorry, eleven, and che- uh, Leicester are ten points in front of Liverpool. I don't see Liverpool. I, I, I'm just astonished. I'm absolutely astonished. I can't believe it. I don't see them being being in the top four. I really don't. 
And, uh, you know, they've got to put all their eggs in one basket. And maybe that's why he rested so many players at the weekend. I mean, they turned them up against Leipzig. They've got Leipzig tomorrow night. They've got Leipzig tomorrow night. But they turned them up from that game. But maybe he thought, you know, we've got to really go for this Champions League. But having to win the Champions League to be in it uh, is a bit of a stretch, isn't it? So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um but very, very interesting, that top four race. And as I say, I wouldn't rule any of those teams out of it all the way down to Spurs. Not saying that, any, that, that enough of them can overtake us. I'm not saying that, but it, we, we've got to be careful. We have got to be careful. We've got to win a few games. We really have. Um, not just Jesse Lingard, who obviously got the United connection, but a great night last night for Inter Milan. I managed to watch the second half of it. It was a cracking game. In, in to beat Atalanta 1-0 in the league. Uh, Milan Skriniar, the uh, centre-back, got the only goal of the game in the 54th minute. And it puts into six points clear of, uh, of the City rivals, AC Milan. Um, it was a fantastic win for him when you could tell the relief at the end. Uh, like I say, I managed to watch the second half. It was a cracking game. And At Atalanta are a good side. Atalanta themselves... Uh, needed a point. A point would have put them in the top four. I know there's plenty of time to go, but a, a point would have put them in the top four on goal difference over Roma, uh, and a win would have put them two points in front of Roma. So it was a big game for Atalanta, and they're no mugs either. And Atalanta threw everything at it in the second half, and it was all hands to the pumps for Inter. Uh, Lukaku played a full game. S uh, Sanchez came on as a sub, got about got about 15 minutes in place of a. Uh, Latoro Martinez and Matteo Damian came on. I'm going to speak about Ashley Young in a minute after I've looked at the table. But Matteo Damian got the last five or six minutes as well. Also, Ericsson. It was a funny one, Ericsson coming on. Ericsson came on uh, for Vidal. Obviously, Inter needed to win, uh, or they, what, they desperately, desperately wanted to win to get that six point gap. Um, and they needed a goal. So on about 53 minutes, they brought Eriksen on and took Vidal off. And Vidal's obviously a more defensive player. And Eriksen's a more creative player. And uh, no sooner did Eriksen come on, they scored. This, it was a free kick and it bounced about in the box. So there was no crea creativity required, so to speak. A uh, bit of a scramble goal, if you like. But still, they scored more or less as soon as Eriksen came on. And it was quite funny. I, I found it quite funny because um, Conte, as the commentator was saying, he, he seemed to spend the rest of the game complaining to Eriksen about his defensive work and getting position and, you know... He, he, Moaning at him really for not being, uh, not being as defensively sound as he would have liked him to have been. But he'd only just brought him on because they needed a goal, and they scored that goal within a minute, and then, and then spent half an hour defending. If he, I think, if he had his time again, he'd have left Vidal on and uh, and left left Ericsson, left Ericsson off. But that's what happened. So they got they got the win into. They got to sixty two points. AC Milan are on fifty six points. Juventus, who have been winning it year on year. Uh, are only on 52 points but they've got a game in hand so Juventus are 10 points behind Inter now they've got a game in hand, fair enough um, but 10 points is a big gap to make up and you could sense it when when that final whistle went don't forget they've been under the caution so they really have when that final whistle went the camera was on the subs bench and the, all the coaching staff and they were all up and you know it looked like it, it looked like a team that are together and it looked like a team that think they've got this title and they, they, they're going to they're gonna scrap for every point all the way there and uh, I've got to say it looked, it looked pretty impressive if, if I'm honest uh, a quick word about Ashley Young he was an automatic starter uh, they play with three centre backs and they play with two wing backs and Ashley Young played left wing back quite a lot but occasionally right wing back because they got numerous options and, and they switched it about but Literally about, I don't know, say six weeks ago, about six or seven weeks ago, he lost his place to Perisic, and you know that's no, you know, it's, it's no shame losing your place to Ivan Perisic. He's a top player, an absolutely top player, and uh, like Ashley Young, he spent most of his time as a, Young's been a fullback for a few years with United, obviously, but he grew up as a winger and spent his early professional years as a winger, as as Perisic. Um, so Young lost his place to Perisic, and last night. Hakimi always plays on the right, and Perisic recently has been playing on the left. But I was I was intrigued last night with with five minutes to go, and they were one one nil up and defending for all they were worth. He replaced the two wing backs, Hakimi and Perisic, uh, with D'Ambrosio and Matteo Damian. So he brought two more, even more defensive style 
full backs or well, really he replaced two wing backs with two full backs. Uh, but uh, how quickly can you go down the pecking order? But you know, Ashton Young's had a great career and he's been there. I think he's been there eighteen months now uh, in Milan and he's already been. He's, I, well, I don't know if his his days are numbered, but it doesn't look good for him when uh, when he's lost his place. He plays on both sides of the field, and when they've replaced both Hakimi and Perisic, he's not even come on. It was uh, Matteo Damian and D'Ambrosio. Uh, uh, just to give you an idea of... Uh, I loved it because it was Matteo Damian, by the way. I quite like Matteo Damian, and a lot of United fans didn't rate him. I think he's a quality player. I think he's going to end up with a Serie A title winner's medal this year as well, and I hope he does. Uh, but one little bit that I absolutely loved, there was a loose ball. Uh, there was a loose ball to be challenged for. He had to run about 10 yards to make that challenge. Uh, and it was in their half. It was probably 30 yards from the dead ball line. But they'd been under the cosh and they were trying to kill every minute that they could. There was only a minute or two left. And Damian raced forward and just beat the opposition player to it and managed to kick it against him. And it went out for a throwing uh, for Inter Milan. And uh, there was probably two or three minutes left. Like I said, they were one up. Uh, and all he did was win a throwing in their half. And... Conte punched the air as if as if Damien had scored a goal. It, it, I thought it was a great moment. I really did, and it showed it showed the passion, and it showed also I think where they think they're going. Uh, so good, good luck to him. Uh, Atalanta, like I say, they're no mugs. Uh, they could have gone above Roma, and I'll mention Roma because obviously Chris Smalling was injured for a while and has started playing again. And uh, I know Chris Smalling played at the weekend. He's not been playing with, uh, I think it was an elbow injury that he had, but he was back in the team at the weekend. And they, they're in fourth. And if if uh, if Atalanta would have even got a point, they'd have slipped into fifth as well. So so that was another another United ex United player who uh, who had a, a decent night. So that's more or less that for now. As I say, I'm looking forward to both Thursday night and Sunday. If you want to watch a bit of football tonight, it's Champions League night. Uh, Champions League night tonight, it starts again. I can't for the life of me understand why they don't have a 6 o'clock and an 8 o'clock or a 7 o'clock and a 9 o'clock, uh, you know, like they're doing for the Premier League games. There's two games tonight, they're both 8 o'clock kickoffs. Uh, so if, you, if you're football crazy, I'm sure you'd like to have watched both of them. Uh, but at, both at 8 o'clock tonight, we've got uh, Juventus versus Porto. Porto are 2-1 up. 2-1 uh, up from the first leg. I fancy Juventus will turn it round, but it could be interesting. That's on BT2 at 8 o'clock. As I say, the other game's 8 o'clock as well. And the other game is uh, Borussia Dortmund versus Sevilla. Sevilla are old, old nemesis from the Europa League last season, obviously. But Dortmund won the away leg 3-2. So I should imagine that is pretty safe. But I always say you don't know that a decent side Sevilla. But one thing they do know is obviously Dortmund have got those away goals, so even a even a one nil win isn't good enough. They've got to score at least two, uh, at least two without reply, uh, really to get through. So um, so that could could be interesting. But I fancy the Juventus Porto one myself. I think that's what I'll be watching. Both of those games at eight o'clock on the BT Sports stations. Um, I'll be back tonight. I did the I did the rating the rating show last night. Uh, and I put all the back four up, as I said, I would, wan uh Luke Shaw, uh, Maguire and Lindelof. I put all those up as uh, to be voted on on Rick the Red UK. The, the voting's not closed yet. So uh, you know, by lunchtime today, or by, by about one o'clock today, I'll know, I'll know who that player will be to be the player in focus. So I'll be back tonight with the player in focus, whichever one of those players wins that vote. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that show. If you've enjoyed that show, uh, please subscribe, please tell all your friends, if you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody, keep stumped.